Have you ever had a dryer that continues to blow the high limit th thermal fuse even after you've changed all the thermostats and, and everything checks good? Well, I have, and buddy, let me tell you, as a technician, it makes you look like you don't know what you're doing when you continually have to return to that customer's house with one of these problematic dryers. But hey, I finally found out what was making this happen, and I'm going to share the solution with you right now. So the other day, Ms. Average customer calls me up. She says, hey, my dryer isn't heating in it. And can you come fix it? Well, that's what I do. So I, I piled up into my service truck and, and no time I'm over there knocking on her door. And she comes to the door and she uh, leads me back to her utility room and, and she has an estate dryer. That's made by Whirlpool. It's got common Whirlpool parts. They're all serviceable, serviceable from the, the back after you remove the back cover. So I turned the dryer over on, on its face and I removed the back, set my multimeter to read ohms so that I can check the continuity of all these components. And it didn't take me long at all, I discovered that the, the high limit thermal fuse had blown. Now all the other components checked out. And to fix things right, you should replace all of these while you have uh, the machine opened up anyway. So you also should, uh, while you're back there, you should always check the element too. So I checked the element and has, it also has continuity and it isn't grounded to the frame. So I, I suppose it's good. So I installed the new thermal cutoff kit and I replaced the back cover. I tidied up, I turned the dryer on for about a minute or so. And I opened the door and I stick my hand up inside and perfect, the machine's heating. So I settled up with this customer and I head to my next job. Well, about the next morning, the phone rings and it's her again and her machine isn't heating. And that's kind of strange because I, I just knew I'd fixed it. So uh, I asked her, did you check your circuit breakers at the wall panel? So I waited while she did that. She said, yes, everything is on, no trip breakers. All right, I'll be right over, I said. So I jump in the truck and head over there. And when I check the machine this time, the high limit fuse is blown again. Now, everything ohms out correctly, but this time I only changed the fuse uh, and, and I, there's no charge to, to her because uh, you know I, I was just there the day before. So I leave her with a functioning dryer thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, it must have been a defective part that got by quality control somewhere in China. They even have quality control. So that afternoon, the phone rings again and it's her again. She's having the same problem. But I can tell from her voice that she's really frustrated and I'm not looking too competent in her eyes either. So, uh, you know, if you know the feeling if you're a service technician. So this time I change all these components again, but I put a thermometer on the exhaust to see what's happening. So I watch the, the thermometer and it climbs to 155 and right on cue, I can hear the cycling thermostat trip. I wait for the temperature to cool down to the range temperature of about 130 where the cycling thermostat should come back on again. But even though the thermostat's cut off and the temperature keeps climbing, it goes to 165. Well, sometimes it, it may do that, but at 170, it should cut off by then. Then it got to 175, 180, 190. It just continuously climbs, so about uh, 210 degrees Fahrenheit, I shut the machine off so that it wouldn't blow a, another high limit th uh, fuse. So I'm thinking that the element has got to be grounded because if it isn't getting power from the cutoff kit, it's got to be shorting to the frame. So I whip out the multimeter and I test the element again and nothing, it's, a, it's perfect. It isn't shorted to the frame. And so what's going on? You know, I'm thinking, well, let me pull the, the element anyway. So I decided to pull it and I see if I can find a problem there. And, and this is what I found. So you see the way these coils are kind of bowed outward. And what was happening is that as the element heated up, these coils expanded enough that they, they reached out and they touched the frame. And you can see the small burnt arc spots here where uh, it grabbed into the frame. And when the cycling thermostat stat cut out, it continued to be energized through the, through the frame uh, until, it, until it would get hot enough to blow the, the uh, high limit fuse. And then it would uh, cool down, it would contract and pull away from the frame, 
And when I tested it again, it would be it wouldn't be grounded. So upon further examination, I found that the inside metal plate of the element body had gotten so hot that it had cracked and it warped, which uh, didn't help the situation any. So I showed the burned element to my customer and she wasn't really interested in that. All she wanted was her dryer to work. And she was a bit annoyed that she had to pay for an element in addition to what she'd already paid me. And I could tell that she thought I should have fixed things right the first time. So anyway, I just chalked this up to one of those learning experiences that makes you a better technician. Despite the aggravation to the customer, I finally got the machine working but I dreaded every time the phone rang for the next few days. It's sort of like when a modern washing machine gets caught in an endless loop. If you want to know how to fix that, check out this video. I hope to see you over there. Thanks for watching.